Hey, welcome back to Bee Mother Reviews, everybody. And today we've got the Legacy Replica Captain America from Iron Studios. And right away you see Mjolnir in his hand, so you know this is the endgame Captain America. And I think, just like Thor in the movie, deep down inside we all knew that Cap would be worthy to possess the power of Thor. But I think what we all want to know now is, is this statue worthy of carrying on the title of America's Ass? We'll find out in the review next. All right, so for me growing up collecting comics, you know, I'll freely admit that the Avengers, you know, Cap, Iron Man, etc., they were pretty far down my personal favorites list. I mean, I collected Spider Man and Daredevil, and when it came to team books, I was definitely more about the X Men than the Avengers. But when it comes to movies, the MCU definitely won me over. I pretty much loved every movie from the whole 10 year arc, and a large part of that is because of Captain America. I felt his arc throughout. The, the first phase, we'll call it, uh, was definitely my favorite. And it just hit for me on so many different levels. I thought the stories were excellent. You know, they were mysterious, action-packed. The fight scenes were amazing. And I love the costume design for him as well. So it just, it really all came together. I thought the casting was also great in those movies. I really liked Chris Evans's cap. So if you ask me what my favorite movie from the MCU is. I mean, there's not a clear runaway winner, but I probably would say Winter Soldier. I think that movie was excellent and it had all those elements I just talked about. Excellent fight scenes, uh, some mystery and intrigue, a bit of a twist ending. I just thought it was an excellent movie and, as I said, probably my favorite from the whole MCU so far. Now, I saw this statue at San Diego Comic-Con last summer and I thought it looked fantastic. So I was pretty eager to get my hands on a production piece to see how it would turn out. Now I gotta say, before we move on, I gotta give a thanks to Starbase Collectibles. They're a local collectible store that have loaned me this statue for the review. So if you live in Canada, uh, they have great prices for you. So check them out on Facebook, Starbase Collectibles. Do that after the review. We're gonna get into sculpt and design next. All right, we're gonna start off talking about the design on this statue, and we'll begin with the base here. You can see the shattered pane of glass behind him, this crumpled window frame, and these chunks of exploded, scorched concrete below his feet. This is clearly set in that epic final battle from Endgame. Uh, and nice details on the base here. They've sculpted the grass, all the different blades of grass below his feet, and they gave it a pretty nice effect there. The concrete has cracks along the surfaces and nice rough edges as you'd expect from these exploded chunks. And I gotta say the rebar here sticking out of that front piece, um, nice realistic size. It's not some enormous diameter bar that you see sometimes on other statues. So nice job with the realism here on the base. Cap himself, it's a pretty traditional museum pose for a statue. Um, you know, sometimes affectionately known as the Captain Morgan here with one foot up like he has here. But I think that works for Cap. It makes him look stoic and kind of resolute, uh, defiant. He's ready to stand up to Thanos here. So I think it works. And overall, it's a nice compact base so it's easy to display. Especially if you're planning to get the trio with Thor and Iron Man as well. Now the sculpt. Uh, I mentioned some of the details on the base, but there's also some really nice details on the costume here for Cap. Nice leather texturing on the boots. You can see the soles of his boots as well, nicely detailed. The buckles and straps down the sides. Now, most of the suit has sort of this Kevlar type of texture to it, uh, but you do get that scale armor look on the chest and on the shoulders. That's so um, such a classic image for Captain America. Um, overall, I think it's a pretty nice screen accurate looking suit. Uh, I'm sure there's something somewhere that doesn't quite line up, but you know, as I said, overall, I mean, there's no mistaking that this is the end game cap. My favorite part about this statue is definitely the portraits. I think they did an amazing job with the likeness. Now, I was always under the impression that, you know, with these types of movie related pieces that the company would get some kind of scan of the actor to work off of and make sure they get a nice likeness. But I was actually chatting with someone in Iron Studios about this and they told me that no, they actually have one particular artist 
that does most of their likeness sculpts and um, does it just by looking at photos. And yeah, I gotta say, after hearing that, I'm even more impressed. Now, they wouldn't tell me who it was that does this. Um, you know, and I guess in fairness, you know, a great sculpt is only as good as the paint job and the production that follow it. So it's really a team effort from Iron Studios. But, you know, as a team, I think they did an amazing job. I think this looks as close as I've ever seen in terms of a likeness to an actor. Um, they did an absolutely amazing job here. So great sculpt and design from Iron Studios. This is a nice movie collectible to have on display in your house. Now, this is the deluxe version of the statue, which means you get quite a few switch outs and I'm gonna show you those next. All right, let's talk some of the switch outs here. Now you saw in the previous segment, I had the helmet on his head, the broken shield and the hammer in hand and I've pretty much changed everything about the statue in those regards. Um, you've got the full shield here. Uh, a Captain America statue would not be complete without a fully intact shield like this. So you do have that. Uh, you can see over here he's got the helmet in hand. Now there is another just closed fist option if you want to go that route as well. Although if you're going to use this unmasked portrait, I think the helmet in hand actually looks pretty good. And you know they've been pretty well completely changed the feel of this piece. This to me looks like the beginning of the battle with Thanos, whereas the other options are sort of mid-battle with Thanos. So, you know, however you choose to interpret it, but that's how I kind of look at these different options. Now, I mentioned the likeness previously, and I think this unmasked portrait is really, really well done as well. Um, really does look like Chris Evans. They even gave him the little mole on his left cheek, uh, which is just, you know, crazy attention to detail. One thing that always kind of makes me chuckle when I watch these movies is just how perfect his hair is in every single scene. And they've given him this nicely styled hair on this portrait as well. You know, secretly I'm just, I guess, kind of jealous of having a head of hair like that. I really wish I could, but you know, overall, nice switch outs for this piece. As I said, completely changes the look and feel of the piece. And that's what you want when you have switch outs. So let's move on. We'll talk about paint next. All right, so for this segment, I've switched back to what I would call probably my favorite configuration for this piece, and that's the broken shield, hammer in hand, and I like the look of the helmet on his face. Now, but one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that you get these extra little bits of broken shield that were torn off in that battle with Thanos, and they just sit loose on the base. So you can place them wherever you want, wherever you think looks best here on the ground around his feet. All right, so let's move on. We'll talk about the paint. Now on the base, it's a pretty basic paint job. You got the gray, the concrete. There's some uh, brown in there to make it look dirty and little scorch marks and things. The grass, I think they did a nice job with that. It's not too in your face, like a nice bright green. It kind of looks like it's covered with a layer of ash and soot as it, as it would after that massive explosion. Now Cap himself, he looks like he's just crawled out from a pile of rubble and gone to war. Uh, which is exactly what he has done in the movie. You know, his suit is covered with dirt and grime. Lots of battle damage on this statue. You look at the shield, is all scratched up like he's been in some kind of massive fight. You got the blood on his face dripping down from his cheeks. Uh, his face does have some of that uh, dirt and grime as well. Uh, they didn't go as heavy with it on the statue as it looks in the movie. Um, so I guess, you know, they could have gone a little bit more with it, but I think that might have been playing with fire a little bit. You know, if you go too heavy, it could have potentially ruined the look of the portrait. And as I said, I really like how they did the portraits on this piece. Um, the skin looks excellent. The skin tones, the lips are a nice subtle pink color to help separate them from the rest of the face. The eyes look good as well. So overall, it's a really nice paint job. It's nice and clean. You know, the lines between all the colors uh, are done exceptionally well. If there's one thing I can nitpick about this piece regarding the paint, I think that the head of the hammer and the shield itself maybe could have had a more metallic looking finish to them. Um, but, you know, as I said, it's a bit of a nitpick. And overall, I think this is a really nice paint job. 
All right, so let's move on. We're going to talk about the production quality on this statue. And overall, I'd say it's pretty good. I mean, the base, it comes in two pieces. This window frame here comes off. Uh, the rest of the base, though, is all one piece. Cap himself, his body, largely one piece, but his arms do come off here at the elbow, and you can see that here. And then they connect into the arm with a magnet. And it's a pretty solid magnet. It feels like a nice secure connection. The heads as well come off and attach with a magnet as well. So it's pretty standard construction for a statue. If you have other statues in your collection, you know what to expect here. Um, it has a pretty nice feel to it. It's, it's about 14 or 15 pounds. So for a statue this size, that's pretty good. Um, one thing you'll note is the hammer is a separate piece from his hand. So it does slide through his hand there. And the reason for that is um, it comes in two pieces in the box. The head of the hammer fits onto the handle, which means you can actually take it out of his hand if you like. If you wanted to go with the closed fist display, you could put the hammer loose on the base if you chose. So that's kind of another option for this statue. One thing that I really like about this piece is that they've cast a lot of the little parts, the straps and things, the helmet separately from the body. And what that does is it actually makes it look like he's wearing this costume. You know, if it was all cast as one piece, these gaps here between the strap and his body, those would be infilled with resin. These gaps here at the cheeks where the, the helmet crosses over his cheeks, again, would be filled in with resin and it would give kind of that artificial look. This looks really nice, as I said. It really looks like he's wearing this equipment. It looks, it, it just adds an element of realism to the piece. Now, one thing you're gonna notice when you unbox the statue is that the hammer and the shield are kind of a plastic material. They feel quite light and plasticky in your hand, um, very different from the rest of the statue. Now, in your hand, it doesn't feel so good, but on display, obviously, you can't tell the difference. So, I mean, that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Overall, I think this is a pretty good production for Minor Studios. They've done a nice job on this cap. All right, it's time to wrap up this review here. The Iron Studios Endgame Captain America Legacy Replica Statue. Now, I noted a couple nitpicks here and there throughout the review, you know, the finish on the shield, the feel of the hammer in your hand, but overall, I have to say, I think this is probably the best movie-related Captain America collectible available right now. Fantastic likeness, I think it looks so much like Chris Evans. Uh, great movie accuracy on the suit. A pretty solid paint job overall. And the design, you know, although it's, it's simple on the face of it, I think it totally works for Captain America. He looks strong. He looks poised. And as they say in the movie, he looks ready to do whatever it takes to defend what he loves. So I think they did a fantastic job with this piece. I have to give another thanks to Starbase Collectibles for loaning this statue for review. So make sure to check out Starbase on Facebook. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, guys, because they always have more coming and more reviews throughout the year. So stay tuned, and we'll talk to you guys soon.